Alrighty then, back once again for another reaction. This time it's Once Upon a Time, Season 1, Episode 17. Now, I am fully expecting some immediate follow-up or consequence to Mary Margaret letting herself out because that is not going to help her case whatsoever. Like, <laughs> I'm sure even Gold, you know, I'm sure even Rumple doesn't want her doing this right now. Like, ugh, Emma knows that you're innocent, but she has to prove it. You are making it easier to convict you, my dear, because you're... You're making yourself look guilty by running. Uh. So I don't know how this can resolve from here. I guess it all depends on what Rumple is going to do. Uh, which I'm very excited for. He's like finally thrown his hat into the ring. Or that Emma had to ask him, of course. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what are you willing like, to give me for it? Whatever it takes. <laughs> well, no, she said more than whatever it takes. And it's like, now we're talking. Like, I, I loved that. I, I love that that's the way his mind works. Like, it's all about the deals, the art of the deal, written by Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> but yeah, that's the main thing that's buzzing through my head in regards to what I saw last time. That Mary's been a bit of a scared idiot right now, and I hope everything's going to turn out okay. But at the same time, this is a drama, so things are still probably going to get worse before they get better. It's just a matter of how worse things are going to end up. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? We ought to just get this thing started. Okay, well, this fell into the category of mostly serious and mindfuck episode. Like, we've had some, like, funny and world-building type episodes in some places, and, like, character developmental episodes, you know, like, uh, Snow White and her dwarves, that kind of thing. Uh, and, oh my gosh, this episode was all drama, with... Uh, tracking down Mary, the both of them getting kidnapped and bound by the Mad Hatter, the, like it, it, getting Emma on the train of thought into like uh, starting to accept that the, the magic stuff's real because so many different people keep like saying it, like. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, and then the unpredictability, uh, because I was like, oh, this is something set up by Regina. But thinking about it, really, like, uh, I was like, wait, she wouldn't really know, would she, that Mary has run off? Like, this literally just happened. Like, so this guy is acting on his own. But then it turns out that Regina and Rumpel knew that this would happen because they knew that she escaped. Like, they're the ones responsible for putting the key in there. You know, I did wonder who put the key in there, but I didn't think it'd be as obvious as, like, either of those two. Because I thought, well, they're invested, like, in this kid. What? You know. I was like, who could possibly have a motivation for letting her out? But well, obviously, it was to get her in trouble for not being there, I guess. And uh, it's a bit of a wrench in their plans that she managed to come back. As Rumple said, they've kind of underestimated Emma here. But my God, the mind blows in this episode. Oh. Uh, before that, though, let, let me just say that I really appreciate this uh, whole um, origin story for the Mad Hatter. Just like with the dwarves, I appreciate the different spin that's gone on here. Uh, with how he got trapped there by a trick from Regina and how he's gone mad trying to replicate his magic hat without knowing how to do so and that is why he's come to be associated with hats and uh, why he's a bit cuckoo. <laughs> you know, and then uh, further down the line, Alice will come along and sit at one of his tea parties. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. That, that that really threw me for a loop that did and then it all clicked into place and I was like that's actually a genuinely brilliant origin story you have done it yet again once upon a time 
Like, oh my goodness. I was a big fan of the pacing in this episode. Like, there was a lot of drama to get through, but I felt that we went through it not too fast and not too slow. I feel like there was a good pacing to it, which is probably why I always felt like, oh no, whenever we had to cut towards something else, you know, you know, I was getting really invested in the drama going on in the house in Storybrooke, and then when it cut back over to the fairy tale world, I was like, oh no, I want to keep watching. So th that showed how uh, great the engagement rate of this episode was. Um, it kept me very invested throughout. There were some periods of silence where it was like, like you're just trying to soak the scene in and like commentary would almost ruin it and take you out of the moment like oh my gosh wow yeah so, some fantastic stuff in it. very good acting uh from old hattie boy here but like especially with the um he's crazy but not really crazy but maybe he's a little bit crazy he seems in the house like that was so well done and <laughs> poor Mary Margaret, she just can't catch a break, can she? She went through, like, the ordeal of the whole affair fallout and uh, getting arrested on murder charges with evidence up to here, runs away, and then immediately gets uh, captured, threatened, bound and gagged. She, she's just not having a good time, is she? Just not having a good time. <laughs> but thank God. She really deserved that little moment of nah, nah, towards Regina when she showed up at the station fully expecting to see an empty cell and she just looks up from the paper like, sup bitch? <laughs> that was really good. You could just see the sourness shriveling behind Regina's face. <laughs> But that was one of the classic Storybrooke twists that I've come to expect, but not really expect because they're so damn good at placing them so that they hit you at points where you're not expecting them, which is what makes them great. The twist of Rumpel and Regina working together on this instead of being at odds. I, obviously, some sort of deal has been broken between them, as they mentioned, in order to screw over Mary for Regina's benefits so the both of them working to screw over regina really makes this a harder mountain to climb and it makes me wonder how emma and mary are going to prove her innocence like is, even i'm starting to think uh, hang on like how did we get ourselves out of this corner uh, i love how henry <laughs> was like so like intrigued that emma was really interested in the storybook like okay you you have it like, wherever this is going it's probably good <laughs> i want you to believe and she seems to have really been implanted with that thought now after being given that talkie to because as she said she's like so lonely from running away all the time and she's happy that she's making connections again and she cares about mary margaret so much because obviously she, she on some level she can feel that it's true that she that mary is her mother and that is so sweet when she was like i really want to believe that's true and then when she accidentally called her family <laughs> but oh it's so sweet <sighs> Mm, it just gives me the warm fuzzies and makes me hope everything will be all right in the end. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure what I was expecting to do with the whole escape, but I know that this episode very much exceeded my expectations with where that could go. The inclusion of the Mad Hatter gave just the right amount of padding and plot progression to Emma's arc that... It ended up making this a very unique experience. I really enjoyed this. Like, um, compared to the dozens of cliche routes we could have gone with Mary's whole failed escape thing, I'm glad that it was done this way. I'm glad that she was even given the choice at the end to do the responsible thing and go back and let the system do its work. That was really cool that Emma did that for her and let her know just how important mary's trust was to her because of everything she's been through just excellent excellent stuff um 
yeah, there was lots of twists and turns in this. I didn't know where the hell the story was going when Emma got knocked out. Like, okay, this just, just went off a cliff. What, what, what's going on? I, I thought he was just going to keep her incapacitated until time ran out. But And obviously that is what was going to happen. Um, because uh, Mary was captive as well. So th they were just going to be like kept there until Regina would discover the empty cell. So that, that all makes sense. <laughs> but then Emma like got out in record time. And then it was like, okay, so let's just skip forward to the pub. Will you help me get a hat to work? God damn it. <laughs> I, I do feel so bad for the guy. I love how much of a loving father he is. Like, it was, I don't want to, like, introduce conflicting thoughts into her while she's living a peaceful life with this admittedly false family. Like, that's not fair to her. Perfect dad. Like, I really hope he gets a happy ending with his daughter. But, like, I really didn't agree with Regina's words when she said that he abandoned his daughter. No, no, no. You tricked him. It was maybe bad judgment on his part to trust you, but no. Uh, abandoning your child is when you fully intend to just, like, leave them and uh, take off. Uh, no, no. He he intent fully intended to come back uh, because, um... I'm pretty sure Regina indirectly threatened the daughter. Like, family is very important to you, isn't it? Or she meant it in the way of providing them riches so they'd never go hungry or have to forage around. I don't know. Either way, he had no choice. And he thought he was going to see his daughter again. So, did he abandon her? I don't think so. That's not how that term works in my mind. Like, Regina was just saying that to be mean and crush his spirit upon leaving because that's just the kind of evil bitch that she is. So, yeah. Wow. Once upon a time, excellence upon excellence upon excellence. I will say it to the end of time. And I shall see you guys next time.